See? You can do it after all. I didn't say you couldn't. Yes, boys, this is it. This is a synthetic fiber. We call it rayon. You mean we make cloth out of that? Yes, we do. Take that sport shirt Bob is wearing. It's made of rayon fiber. Could you tell us just how it's made? Yes, we want to tell the class about it. Well, it's quite a story. We make rayon from wood, you know, but, well, have you ever seen a spider spinning a web? Oh, yes, of course. Well, when we make this rayon fiber, we're imitating a spider spinning a web. The spider makes a liquid in its body. When it spins the thread for its web, it forces this liquid out through tiny holes called spinnerets. This makes a fine thread. Now, you know how silk is made? Yes, we've had that. Well, then you know how the silkworm makes a fiber. Now, we make this rayon fiber in somewhat the same way. Rayon begins as wood. The first step is to break up logs into pulp. This is done here at a pulp mill. In this mill, the wood is chopped up and cooked. It comes out looking like this. Here, here's a piece of wood pulp. This is still wood, though it looks like blotting paper. Now this goes to the rayon mill, where they put it into tanks. The pulp comes to the mill in large sheets. They put these sheets into a tank. Then they fill the tank with a chemical. After the pulp is soaked in this bath for a while, they squeeze out some of the chemical and it's ready for the next step. They take it out and drop it down through a hole to the floor below. The pulp drops right down into a shredding machine. This machine breaks it up into small pieces. Over here is another shredder just like it. And this man is getting ready to empty it. When the pulp comes out, it's broken up into fluffy crumbs. And if we look inside, we can see the turning paddles that do the work. Now the crumbs go down a chute into a room where they age for a couple of days. Then from the aging room, the crumbs drop into another machine. This is something like a churn. In these, the crumbs are thoroughly churned together with another chemical called carbon disulfide. When it comes out of this churn, it's no longer wood pulp, but something different. We have some of it here. See here? Now the next step is to dissolve this in another chemical. It quickly becomes a thick liquid like this. Now we're ready to make it into a fiber. I'll show you again how it works. This is an acid bath. We use this tube as a spinneret. We draw in some of the liquid, and force it out through the tiny hole on the end of the tube. The acid hardens it, and here's our rayon fiber. Now in the mill, they do the same thing on this spinning machine. This machine has many spinnerets. He's lifting up one of them now. This is the spinneret. 
And if we look closely at the end of it, we see it has many tiny holes with liquid oozing out of them. Now he's putting the spinneret down into the acid bath. And here's the fiber forming. The liquid is forced out through the holes in the spinneret to form these filaments. The filaments are drawn together into a single fiber. And this is twisted into a strand of rayon yarn. It goes down into this box. These men are taking cakes of yarn out of the machine. They call this doffing. Whenever enough yarn has been wound into a box, they open it up and take out the cake. A full cake of rayon yarn, ready to be washed and dried and woven into cloth. Does that tell you how we make cloth from wood, John? Yes, it gives me a pretty good idea. Say, Mr. Norton, we make cloth from coal too, don't we? Is that the same thing? Cloth from coal? Well, not quite. Here's a piece of a cloth we make from coal and other things. It's called nylon. But how can a soft thing like this come from a hard thing like a piece of coal? Well, boys, it's a long story. But it does begin with coal. Just ordinary coal from the mines. This goes to a coke oven. Here it is broken down into a number of things. One of these is coal tar. And from coal tar, we get a number of chemicals. From this, after a long series of steps, we get these two substances. This is adipic acid, and this is hexamethylene diamine. Hexa, hexa, say Mr. Norton, how can you remember a name like that? Well, <laughs> you get used to those names when you use them every day. Now these chemicals make nylon. First we mix them together in a little water. This makes a liquid we call nylon salt. Now at the nylon plant, this liquid is made in large tanks. Then it is piped into an evaporating tank. Here some of the water is boiled away. Next, it is piped into a room full of large holes that are something like pressure cookers. The cookers are controlled by the instruments on this panel. And this man is starting to cook a batch. He has it ready in this vessel. Here it cooks under heat and pressure. This causes an important chemical change. The nylon comes out of the bottom of the cooker as a wide white strip. This is solid nylon. It hardens under sprays of water, then goes into a machine that chips it into flakes. It's blended and melted and then it's pumped to the spinnerets. Just now, this man is putting a nylon spinneret into place. And here, out it comes, the hot molten nylon, out through the tiny holes to form these fine filaments. These filaments harden in a current of warm air. And down here, they are gathered into a single fiber. This fiber is drawn onto a machine on the floor below. This machine twists it into a single strand of nylon yarn. 
The strands are wound on large bobbins. And here's a full bobbin of bright, silky nylon yarn. But now, before this can be made into cloth, it has to be stretched. See how we can stretch it? This stretching gives it strength and true elasticity. Now, a lot of this nylon yarn is used for stockings, you know. Stockings are made on the knitting machines in a hosiery mill. This machine knits a number of stockings at a time. The machine has rows of needles. There, he's straightening one of the needles now. Now the machine is knitting again. See how the nylon threads move in and out and back and forth among the needles. The machine knits a stocking in a broad, flat strip. To make a finished stocking, these strips have to be sewn up. And that's just what they sews the sides of strip together. Now it looks like a stocking. The stockings are done. They are put on forms and heated for a time. This sets them in the proper shape. At last they come off the forms as finished stockings. Now they're ready to be worn.